Hey, what's up guys? So a question that a lot of you guys have asked is what happens if you're driving a car that has radar-based blind spot monitoring system and you're also running a radar detector inside your own car? Uh, will the blind spot monitor of your car cause false alerts on the radar detector that you're using as opposed to other people nearby with a car that uh, has blind spot monitoring system? And it's a great question. Um, there hasn't been a ton of information out there because, well, a lot of people who are super into radar detectors maybe would try to avoid cars that are going to be otherwise problematic. Even if it works for you, you don't want to cause problems for other people nearby, you know? Kind of similar to having a leaky radar detector, you've got like a leaky car, a car that causes problems for others. Uh, well, I've been actually looking at uh, replacing my Mazda, uh, my Miata here soon for an SUV. And so this week I've been driving a bunch of different SUVs. And uh, one that I had kind of written off uh, were the Mazdas, like the CX-5 and the CX-9. Now the CX-9 has a good grill for installing countermeasures, but it's got notoriously horrible blind spot monitoring systems as well as laser that causes false alerts on like the V1 and whatnot. And so uh, today I actually went out and, well, this week I've been driving a bunch of cars. Today I drove a CX-9 and it was interesting. I wanna go ahead and share this with you guys. Now for the test drives, I've been bringing my V1. Uh, it's a great detector just because it's got uh, arrows. It can detect stuff front and rear. Um, it's really easy to change settings from your phone. You can turn the blind spot monitoring stuff on and off, things like TMF2 or K-band pop detection. So it's been a good one for testing. And uh, I think when I was running it in the CX-9, this was most interesting. Uh, what I found is with the filters disabled, when I was running it inside the vehicle, my V1 was going crazy. It was picking up tons of blind spot monitoring systems, anywhere from three, four, five, six bogeys at a time. It pretty much made running the detector unusable inside the car. Uh, with a salesperson, we even sat inside and tried turning off all of the different systems, whether it's blind spot monitoring or any of the other radar-based safety systems. Now, something to note is typically when you turn these systems off, it's not actually turning off the systems. It's just turning off the notifications inside the vehicle, but the radar itself is always gonna be transmitting regardless, which is why people have been wondering, how do you disable this stuff? Do you try pulling fuses? And then is it gonna pop up an error code on your heads-up display? Or can you try to somehow unplug the radar system itself or put some sort of radar absorbing foam around it? Like what can we do to disable it? It's kind of annoying, you know? Um, but yes, as far as the Mazdas, I tried it in the car and yes, it was very problematic. Now on a better note, uh, I tried actually enabling TMF2, the blind spot filter, and that actually did a really good job. It wasn't able to completely filter out all the blind spot falses coming from the vehicle. I would get anywhere from maybe one to zero bogeys. It would go back and forth, but uh, it was able to quiet things down, but not completely. So for those of you guys who have a car that has radar-based blind spot systems, especially something like a Mazda that is pretty notorious for being very difficult to filter out and causes problems for a lot of people, Yes, I can definitely say that it's not a good idea to uh, run a radar detector inside that vehicle because it's gonna be causing problems not only for others, but also for you. Uh, now, I also tested it in a 2018 Audi Q5. Uh, these ones typically don't cause issues for other people nearby. Some of the older Audis cause problems, especially some of the older filters on the detectors, but uh, the newer Audis and the newer detectors, there doesn't seem to be much of an issue. Now, I repeated the same test with the V1 uh, with the filters off, no issues in the Audi. Uh, I tried it with the filters on, again, no issues. And so depending on which vehicle you have, um, it may or may not be an issue. It's kind of like how there's a lot of cars with blind spot monitoring systems, but not all of them false R detectors. It's gonna be the same thing depending on what vehicle you drive and also what radar detector you're running as to whether or not there's gonna be an issue. Now, I know there's gonna be a ton of questions. What about this detector and this vehicle combination? I obviously don't know every single one, um, but I'm really curious from you guys, or if you're running something like a Honda, you know, or an Acura, or some of the other ones that are pretty notoriously bad, are you able to get away with it? Is this a possibility or are you having issues? And I'm kind of curious as far as what you guys' experience is uh, and also what detectors you're running. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to share a little bit as far as uh, kind of some testing I was doing for my own sake while test driving cars and kind of inadvertently while also finding out something that you guys have been wondering and it's something that I've been wondering too. And so I just wanted to share this with you guys. So yeah, it looks like if you have uh, blind spot monitoring in your car, especially something like a Mazda, it will definitely cause issues for you just like it will for everybody else around you. And so good to know. Um, I guess another thing on the last note, 
I did a video a little while ago talking about how the FCC is going to be mandating that all automotive manufacturers move away from K-band for any sort of in-car radar systems, whether it's blind spot monitoring, uh, smart cruise control, things like that. Um, so in a few years, we should actually be seeing uh, a complete migration away from K-band entirely, which is going to be awesome. Uh, you can click the button on screen for more information about that. Um, again, that's not going to be completely solving the issue because, of course, there's a lot of cars already out on the market that are going to continue to stay on the market and they're going to continue to cause problems for those of us running radar detectors, but it is good to see that in the future, new cars should no longer continue creating these same sorts of problems for us. But today, in 2019, yes, we do have some issues with certain cars and certain radar detectors being run together. So, awesome. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys found this helpful. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'm sure a lot of you guys will ask, what about this detector? What about that car? I don't know, of course, all of them, but wanted to share what I do know with you guys. So, awesome. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.